Nothing happens until something moves, said Albert Einstein. My name is Tegemangu Sawadro, and I am here to talk about a phenomenon known as fluid elastic instability. There is a saying that a picture is worth a thousand words, so I am going to start by showing you some animations. Let's look at these animations. The first is an airplane wing in a wind channel. The second is a water hose. The third is the Tacoma narrow bridge collapsing. And the fourth is a tube array subjected to a flow. Now a question, what do they all have in common? The first thing they have in common is uncontrollable large amplitude structure motion. And the second thing they have in common is an interaction between a structure and a flow. So the phenomenon that is shown here is known as fluid elastic instability. It is also referred to as aeroelastic further in the case of uh, airplane wing vibration. Now, why are we interested in this in the nuclear industry? It's because Nuclear power reactors have mechanical components interacting with flow. For example, steam generators have thousands of tubes carrying radioactive content, and these tubes are subjected to a flow of a fluid that is being evaporated into steam and directed toward the turbine to generate the power. Let's imagine for a moment a steam generator tube carrying radioactive content subjected to such large amplitude displacements you get the picture that is something we want to avoid. And in order to do so, we need to understand the phenomenon. So how does fluid elastic instability happen? It is all about energy transfer between a, a fluid and a structure. When a fluid flows across a structure, it generates forces acting on the structure. And according to Newton's third law, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. So. In reaction to the fluid forces, the structure generates forces, and there are three types of forces. We have iner an inertia component, which is synchronous with the structure acceleration. We have a damping component, which is synchronous with the structure velocity. And the damping is an energy dissipation mechanism under the form of heat, produced by the friction of the molecules of the structure and the flow. And we have an elastic component, which is synchronous with the structure position hence the term fluid elastic. Now, the structure motion modifies the distribution of the flow around it, and this has an effect on the forces generated by the fluid, and the forces in, in turn ha have an effect on the structure motion. So, there is a fluid, uh, there, there is a feedback between the structure motion and the fluid forces. And when you increase the flow velocity, you reach a certain flow velocity where there is more energy being fed from the fluid to the structure than being dissipated through damping. So when that happens, the structure is subjected to large amplitude displacement, and this is what is called fluid elastic instability. So in our section, we study the phenomenon through three different projects. We have a U-tube bundle, and we completed the test on that one. And we have a straight tube bundle where we conduct detailed study, and we have a computer code to model the phenomenon. So, what I'm going to show is a recording of uh, the straight tube bundle test, where we increase the flow velocity and reach a flow velocity where, to put it uh, in the terms of the technology that was working with me, the tubes started dancing. Remember, nothing happens until something moves, but too much motion might not be desirable. Our goal, ultimately, is to prevent the tube from dancing and leave the dancing 